Dario Pisali, an expert on the interrelationships between sustainability, science, policy, and law, with a special focus on biodiversity, global food systems, and global health, will enlighten us on this topic. Dario is currently working as an expert on environment, health, and well-being for European Environment Agency. Dario, I give you the floor. Thank you very, thank you very much. You should be able to see my slides. Can you confirm that? Yes, I, but I can see it in the screen. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for the for the introduction. Thanks for uh, having me. As uh, you uh, rightly mentioned, I work as an expert at the European Environment Agency. Uh, for those of you who may uh, not be familiar with the agency, we are uh, one of the agencies of the European Union, one of the uh, agencies that provide scientific advice. So our mandate is really to collect, analyze, uh, assess, and provide information on environment and climate topics to, uh, to European institutions and to the member states. Uh, so we really work at the interface of uh, of science and uh, and policy together with our member and uh, and cooperating countries. Um, you um, introduced very well the the concept of of One Health and the idea that. Uh, we need to take into account the uh, interrelation between human, animal, uh, plant, soil, and uh, and environmental health because these are all closely linked and and interdependent and 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 we need to have a, a unified, integrated approach to achieve um, uh, a status of health across these different dimensions. And this framing of one health, as you uh, um, as you kind of mentioned uh, when it, when it emerged it was really focused on the interface between animal health and and human health but over time it really expanded as a concept to bring in the environmental dimension very strongly and the need to um, bring in um evidence um across different disciplines and to increase collaboration across different sectors um, and and this is, I think, where you know um, most of us are probably familiar with the concept of environmental health and the idea, of course, that the environment um, and environmental factors, environmental degradation, represent an important risk factor for a wide range of human health outcomes. To this date, still one in ten premature deaths in Europe are linked to environmental pollution. But human health, um, but one health adds an additional element, uh, if you will, as as I said, uh, the elements of plant, animal, and soil health. And then, as it's it's an operative concept, right? It's the idea that we should um, bring together evidence from these dis different disciplines to target at the same time um, these different uh, elements, these different dimensions. And the environment is important in one, in the notion of one health. So. Uh, in relation to human health and in relation to animal, soil, and, and plant health, because, of course, it is first and foremost a reservoir of substances and elements that are fundamental to human needs, but also pollutants and, and pathogens. And its role as a reservoir is affected by stressors, including pollution, land use change, um, climate change, and, and so on. This, of course, influences the processes that take place in the environment, including for example, the bioavailability and the bioaccumulation of, of pollutants, and finally makes the environment a health mediator in the sense that the pollutants and pathogens accumulating in the environment lead to health effects through food safety, through air pollution, through zoonotic spillovers, and, and so on. Um, this also means that the earlier we act in the chain or at the interface between environment, animal, and, and human health, uh, the better we can prevent disease, and also the lower uh, we can um, reduce the costs of inaction, uh, the cost of uh, healthcare, the cost of uh, animal uh, uh, health, uh, and 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 so on and, and so forth. Um, now let's you know if we try to look a bit more specifically at, at soils, of course, why why I, did I want to make this this uh, little uh, umbrella introduction about one health, is that. It is, I feel, very important in also in the in the context of your event to make this link between soils and human health through the notion of of one health, and of course, uh, you know, uh, soil degradation is strictly linked to the degradation of ecosystem services, including health-related ecosystem services, um, through processes and 
drivers, including climate change, biodiversity loss, emissions of, of pollutants, which also interact with each other, uh, and then have consequences for health-related ecosystem services, including, of course, food security, including the provision of water quality, uh, the regulation of, of climate uh, through the carbon storage function. Um, and, and of course, this is a broad view of health and well-being, because it also includes dimensions that are not necessarily direct health impacts, but are strictly linked to health, as I mentioned, food security, the, the provision of, of um, nutritious uh, food. And this means also that so threats to soil health, uh, ranging from soil pollution to soil nutrient status to loss of biodiversity, have a negative impact on, on, on these uh, services provided by soils. And, and I think um, it is important when we think about health, human health, to not think only of the direct health impacts, but also to take into account these other functions that are very important for human well-being and, and societal needs. Um, when we zoom in a bit more on, I would say, pollution, which would be a bit more the focus of, of my presentation today, um, it, it is clear that unhealthy soils have important impacts on human health. And these relate, as I mentioned, to some of the health-related ecosystem services, but also to a range of, of other health outcomes. For example, a degraded soil amplifies the effects of climate change on land surface, prolongs the duration of uh, high temperatures during heat waves. At the same time, the contamination of soils from heavy metals, uh, pesticides, antimicrobials make soils a source, a possible source of human exposure to these chemicals. And, uh, and people, of course, may be also indirectly exposed to these soil pollutants through contaminated drinking or, or bathing water. Uh, soil erosion is also strictly linked to soil contamination because, of course, erosion by wind transports soil particles and harmful chemicals. Um, it, it leads to greater amounts of airborne particulate matter, so it leads to um, higher levels of air pollution. Um, and, and of course, it's important to think also of the legacy contamination aspects because this is not only related to the direct exposure, but also to, for example, contaminated sediments can be, can, that can be remobilized through flooding or other extreme weather events. Um, to deal with this, I think it's, it's important to take a One Health view of pollution as it affects soils. Uh, so bringing in also animal health, because of course, animal health is also affected by soil and water contamination. Um, and can represent an important link between environmental pollution and, and adverse um, health outcomes. Think, of course, about, about the fact that humans can um, consume um, a food grown in polluted soils or products, um, animal products that were fed with um, contaminated uh, foodstuff. When we look a bit at the trends, um, I think. Uh, I, I would encourage you to look, for example, at our recent zero pollution monitoring assessment that the EA uh, conducted uh, as part of its mandate under the, the uh, as part of a mandate that it was given under the zero pollution action plan of the European Commission. Um, there, we included a section on soil pollution and health, where we recognize that there is very limited data available about contaminant levels in soil and how these contaminants affect health and um, soil resilience in the face of chemical pollution has been compromised in areas with intensive agriculture, and there is no evidence of decreasing pressure on, on soil quality. Uh, we're also quite distant from objectives uh, and, and targets, even though, of course, soil is affected by a range of other policies um, that, uh, that target um, specific elements, such as, of course, nutrients or uh, nitrates in groundwater or the use of pesticides. Uh, but at the same time, um, there needs to be a more overarching framework and also better monitoring mechanisms are needed to understand the direction of, of travel. And these are just some example. Uh, of course, uh, nutrient uh, uh, pollution, excess nutrient pollution has an important link with human health, uh, not only through, uh, of course, water and, and air quality, uh, but also food and water provisions um, it can lead, of course, to proliferation of uh, cyanobacteria, uh, through algal blooms. Uh, ammonia emissions in particular are, of course, very problematic because of their link to air pollution. And parts of Europe have relatively high uh, surpluses of nitrogen and, and, and phosphorus, particularly in, in intensive livestock um, regions. Heavy metals uh, are, of course, uh, an important concern. Recently, the European Commission has estimated 
uh, around 24.4 billion per year of soil contamination related costs in, in Europe. And this of course links to uh, heavy metals such as cadmium, lead, copper, zinc, uh, but also for example, to PFAS, the so-called forever um, chemicals. One important example is, as I said, uh, cadmium, because high and increasing concentration of cadmium have been found in agricultural topsoils in Europe. And, and this mainly comes in agricultural soil from phosphate fertilizers. Um, diet is an important source of exposure. Um, and it has been recognized that use of mineral phosphate fertilizer on agricultural land, uh, land has been linked to exposure to, to cadmium. Uh, as you can see through a human biomonitoring study um, that it was conducted under Horizon 2020, um, human exposure to cadmium was assessed across nine European countries. And although there was significant geographical variation, there are some countries where this level of exposure is quite high, as you can, uh, as you can see from, um, from this uh, chart. There is a uh, very limited improvement on pesticide residues in soils, also an important threat to human health, to soil biodiversity. Um, this is uh, a monitoring conducted by the Joint Research Center of the European um, Commission as part of the so-called Lucas Soil uh, Survey. As you can see, uh, there are a lot of data points in Europe that has uh, residues of, uh, that have an incidence of several uh, substances, uh, even um, above 10 different uh, substances and um, importantly there hasn't really been an improvement between the two last uh, years in which the survey was conducted between 2015 and, and 2018 so the trend is not really positive it seems. Uh, finally of course contaminated sites are uh, an important source of risks to human health. Uh, there's a conservative estimate at the moment of almost 3 million potentially contaminated sites in uh, in Europe. Uh, often some of these sites have unknown ownership, they're legacy sites, and, and this is a, an estimate that is considered conservative uh, as the number uh, is, is likely to be of underestimated. There are positive recent trends in the management of these contaminated sites, but the varying level of, of, uh, of action at the national level. And, uh, and so, of course, it is important that we see this positive trend in the management and remediation of contaminated sites in this, in this broader context. I would like to conclude uh, by um, giving a, a takeaway message, which is, of course, the recognition that at the moment, EU soils are not healthy and soil health is still deteriorating in Europe. Um, and this impacts human health uh, through, the way, through some of the ways that we have discussed. Uh, again, direct health impacts, um, but also indirect effects on health-related ecosystem services. And it is important to take this broad One Health approach to deal with um, the issue, recognizing that the health of soils is really interconnected with the health of animals, with the health of the environment, with the health of, of humans. Just as a, as a little policy context, you know that the European soil strategy to 2030 has set this vision of having all soils on healthy condition by 2050. Um, at the same time, we need policies to get there. Um, the European Commission impact assessment of the recently proposed soil health law recognized that the implementation of current policies and other European Green Deal action may help reduce soil pollution, but there is also the need for a more holistic framework that the, soil, that the proposed soil health law tries to, to provide. Most notably because there are gaps in existing policies which target soil in a fragmented way, looking at different compartments, but not um, directly necessarily targeting some of the processes that affect uh, soils. Importantly, there are opportunities for synergies across these policies, including in relation to human health, because of course, improving uh, policies in areas such as you know water uh, quality and air pollution is also likely to uh, have uh, industrial emissions is likely to have a positive effect on on soils as well. The final message is that it is fundamental to prevent soil pollution at source, which aligns with the zero pollution hierarchy introduced by the zero pollution uh, action plan. And this prevention links back to what I was saying at the beginning, that if we act at source to prevent environmental degradation and pollution, including in soils, that will greatly reduce the impact on human health and the costs also of dealing with these human health impacts. Um, thank you very much for the attention. Of course, I'm happy to uh, receive any inquiries uh, afterwards. Thanks again.